Bill Cassidy joins us right now, Mr. Doctor, Senator Bill Cassidy, and uh, good morning, sir. Hey, Tommy, how are you, buddy? I'm well, and you? I am fantastic. Man, I, I'm I'm surprised by a couple of things here. Um, Lindsey Graham now saying that he uh, told John McCain to give the famous, infamous Steele dossier to the FBI, the president trashing John McCain last week. And I guess nobody knows what they don't know. So John McCain came to him. He says, uh, I don't know, maybe it's true, maybe it's not. Give it to the FBI. And then it was an assistant of his that leaked it in December, apparently late December, to the media. And I guess the point in all of this, Senator, is should the president just let this go? Should the Republicans let this go? Is there anything to be gained by looking at the other side? And I'll talk about the president in a second. Uh, your thoughts on all of this with uh, pursuing a special investigation against the Democrats, uh, FISA warrant, et cetera? Well, first, if you go back to the origin of the Steele dossier, you can imagine why the president continues to be aggravated. It was paid for by the Democratic National Committee and shopped around to multiple venues. Now, no one was told that, oh, someone else has been given it and someone else has been given it. It was all a hope to get it to the FBI. I can't comment upon what McCain did. He had told me he had done it at the time, and I suppose he thought there might be truth to it. If he was still alive and you said, listen, it was financed by the Democratic National Committee, downloaded from CNN websites, un unverified, and shopped around trying to get the FBI and say, this is you know, fecal material, throw it out the door. Uh, but that's hindsight. Now, I think that whether or not there's an investigation of Democrats, I can't comment on that. I do know that House Democrats... Oh, he didn't know. Do you saying, think there should be? Oh, um, I, I think that the OIG, the Office of whatever... Inspector um, General is uh, looking is, into it, is, right? ...is actually looking into this. Yeah. And I think that could uncover... And it already has, by the way, that, that there was a conflict of interest among Peter Stork and, and Ms. Page, uh, that, that if there are problems. Personally, I'd probably restrict it to that. As regards to the, why it might happen politically, if despite the fact that this has come out from Mueller, no evidence of collusion, no evidence of obstruction, uh, because there was no crime to obstruct, but House Democrats continue to pursue the president just to dog his presidency, I can imagine you would set up a situation of tit for tat. But I'm see, not pleased about that. Yeah, we okay. got to move on. But on the other hand, uh, you can just imagine it playing out that way. Had you ever heard anything about Lindsey Graham telling John McCain to take it to the FBI? I had not. Okay. Now, in terms of this moving on, the president, I'm going to get to the opioid thing in a second, but the president yesterday morning, Senator, tweets, good morning, have a great day. And I'm thinking, you know what? This, this is a reborn president, not in terms of, of religion or anything, but this is a guy who's going to seize the, seize the moment and change the conversation. 22 minutes ago, the mainstream media is under fire and being scorned all over the world as being corrupt and fake. For two years, they pushed the Russian collusion delusion when they always knew there was no collusion. They truly are the enemy of the people and the real opposition party. Yesterday, Bibi. I call him Bibi, uh, is in, in the Oval Office, Benjamin Netanyahu, and the president talks about treasonous acts being committed. Let me throw this at you, and then maybe you could see what you think about it. I would have the president rise all above this. I would have his leader, Steve Scalise, in the, in the House. I would have um, who do you, Mitch McConnell in the Senate. I would have them do all of the heavy lifting on this. If I were the president, I would stay above the fray. I would, re I would only deal with what I've accomplished and what I hope to accomplish in the next, notice this number, six years. And do you think the president, you know, I don't put you in a spot here, but do you, do you think maybe it'd be a better way to do it the way I'm saying? Tommy, Tucker, if there's one thing we've understood about this president, he is a street fighter. Yeah. And sometimes you think he should put down the knife and go back to his corner. That's not this guy. Yeah. You come after him, he's coming after you. Yeah. And he feels like for the last two years he's been dogged by something which he knew was not true but could never shake loose of uh, because people wanted ratings on the cable news networks. Uh, so, uh, but they were pretty quiet yesterday, is what I'm saying. They, they, they Rachel Maddow almost crying when the news came out. <laughs> Nicole Wallace didn't know whether to, you know, what cry or vomit. And anyway, speaking, let's talk about opioids and um, what it is that you got uh, grant in terms of Louisiana. Yeah, so there's about six million dollars coming down to Louisiana, part of a bigger opioid package. 
to make medication-assisted therapy more available. And somebody listening right now either is addicted or knows someone who's addicted to opioids. It just is a vice. It doesn't let you go. For some folks, many folks, most folks, they need some sort of medication-assisted therapy. So these dollars are coming down to the state to make it more generally available. Uh, and all I can say to someone out there listening, if you know somebody with an opioid addiction or if you have it, seek the help out. Uh, there is an answer, and just turn your life. Senator, I saw a piece on Fox News, it might have been Chris Wallace, about how it started with opioids, then it progressed to heroin, now it's fentanyl, it's ki- killing God knows how many people. Um, is it going to be something else if, if, for whatever reason, we can find a way to keep fentanyl out of the country? Well, there's always going to be something else. Methamphetamine deaths and cocaine deaths are climbing as well in mm. certain parts of the country. Uh, the reality is uh, there's a sheriff up in Alexandria, Rapids Parish, William Hilton. He said fighting drugs is like mowing grass. It never completely stops as long as you have grass. Mm-hmm. Uh, you just got to keep on doing it. On the other hand, we can't arrest our way out of this. An addict is sick. An addict, if goes to jail, clogs up a jail so a murderer can't get in. But, but you don't really deal with underlying sickness. What we're trying to do is... Uh, dealing with uh, deal with the underlying sickness. Thank you, Senator. I appreciate your time. Come back on often, will you? Thanks, Tommy. I will, buddy. Tomorrow, maybe. That'd be great. I'm kidding. <laughs> Have a good day. All right. Bye-bye. Senator Bill Cassidy, six twenty.